Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Well, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you love truth, if you are a truth seeker, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We let the chips fall where they may. And we don't tiptoe through the tulips. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to get right into our broadcast on this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, my spiritual growth in Yahweh did not happen overnight. I have been on a spiritual journey since February 1982. Second Peter 3 and 18 declares, but grow in grace and in knowledge of our master and savior, Yahoshua Mashiach. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. My spiritual journey began in the Pentecostal slash apostolic church. There was a time when you could not tell me that the oneness Pentecostals and apostolics were not Yahweh's chosen people. Because of my limited knowledge of the Bible, I could not see the heresies that was taught, ladies and gentlemen, amongst them. But Yahweh seen my desire for truth and knowledge Therefore, he gradually revealed to me more and more truth. In the first couple years of me being in the apostolic church, I would read over 150 chapters of the Bible in a week. I would read the whole book of Job and the book of of Psalms in one day. I, would, I was obsessed with reading and studying the Bible. I was obsessed with knowledge. I would go to the library and do research. During those days, we did not have the internet. We couldn't Google, ladies and gentlemen, back in the 80s. I would buy Bible dictionaries concordances, commentaries, etc. As I began to study and do research, Yahweh began to show me the error in the apostolic church. Yahweh revealed to me that women could not pastor nor preach. Yahweh revealed to me the pagan origins of Christmas, Easter, Valentine's, Halloween, Mardi Gras, and etc. Now, the church that I was in, ladies and gentlemen, they condoned these things. I was a young minister during this time and could no longer remain in the apostolic church with a clear conscience. Therefore, after seven years, I began pastoring and evangelizing. Anywhere I got a door open, ladies and gentlemen, I preach, amen, the word of Yahweh. At the tender age of 26, I began pastoring for out about two years, for about two years. And the next eight years, I pastored and evangelized. During this eight-year period, Yahweh continued to reveal more truth to me. However, I was still in Babylon I still call myself a Christian, but I continue to grow in knowledge of the scriptures. And in 1996, 
my life took a drastic change. Yahweh revealed to me the seventh day Sabbath and the dietary law. I began to observe, ladies and gentlemen, the seventh day Sabbath and the dietary law. I began to separate myself more and more from the Christian church. In January 1997, I planted a church in Louisiana and I have been pastoring ever since. It was not until a few years ago that Yahweh gave me the true revelation and meaning of Revelation 18 and 4. Revelation 18 and 4 declares, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partake of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Christianity, Roman Catholicism, and Protestantism or simply organized religion is the her Yahweh is admonishing his people to come out of. See, I thought that there was two Christianities, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that there was a apostate and fraudulent Christianity and a authentic and genuine true Christianity. Boy, was I wrong. I taught for years there was two Christianity, a bad Christianity and a good Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. But Yahweh revealed to me through extensive study and research that all of Christianity, the entire Christian church world is apostate and fraudulent. Every denomination and non-denomination Christian church is false and erroneous. Once I received that knowledge, I stopped calling myself a Christian. And in 1999, Yahweh revealed to me the sacred names, Yahweh and his son's name, Yahoshua. I read a book that actually changed my life that opened my eyes about the sacred names but it took me 20 years for me to use the sacred names exclusively i would interchange with the generic and artificial names jesus and titles lord and god when visitors came into the midst of our assembly where i pastor Ladies and gentlemen, I will interchange, amen, and use the generic and artificial names of Jesus and titles, Lord and God. However, when we did not have visitors in our midst, I used the sacred names exclusively. I call myself using wisdom, diplomacy. I did not want to run people off because many thought we was a cult anyway because we were so different from the um, normal Christian church or common Christian church because the scripture says he that winneth souls is wise Proverbs uh, 11 and 30 ladies and gentlemen that's why I did it I didn't use the names exclusively when we had visitors because I use I I, I I considered myself using wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't want to run people off. Glory to Yahweh. And I used the, the verse in Colossians 4 and 5, which says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. But Yahweh eventually showed me that I was wrong for concealing the truth from the ignorant. You know, the Bible says that Yahweh is going to do a short work and cut it short in righteousness, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have much time, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. People need to hear the truth, ladies and gentlemen, more than ever before. I know to some listening to me think that I am weird I've lost my mind and I'm talking crazy for those that have listened to my videos.
When I first heard someone teaching that we shouldn't observe the seventh day Sabbath and the dietary law, I could not receive that. I thought they were weird and that they were trying to bring us under the law. The first time I heard someone say that, ladies and gentlemen, we should rather keep the seventh day Sabbath and the dietary law. I thought they was weird. And I thought they was trying to bring us under bondage, bring us under the law when I heard them uh, teach that, ladies and gentlemen. So the first time I heard someone teaching that we should observe the seventh day Sabbath and the dietary law, I could not receive it. I couldn't receive it. Like many of you, you can't receive the teachings, my teachings, you can't receive it. And I couldn't receive it, ladies and gentlemen. I thought they were weird and that they were trying to bring us under the law. I used to celebrate Christmas, Easter, and Valentine's because the apostolic church I attended celebrated them. I was a, a, a new convert, a novice. I didn't know the word, ladies and gentlemen. I thought they was right because my pastor observed these pagan holidays celebrated Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day and even Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, in the apostolic church. They brought a, a horror house, a scary house, ladies and gentlemen, in the fellowship hall right there in this church. And they had over 500 members in attendance, ladies and gentlemen. And the pastor was out there. He was smiling and rejoicing. Ladies and gentlemen, they brought in real coffins and had people in the coffins. And ladies and gentlemen, it was disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. But they did it right there in the Apostolic Church Fellowship, Fellowship Hall I attended. Ladies and gentlemen, I celebrated pagan holidays because my pastor did and the church did. So I was a new convert, a novice. I didn't think anything was wrong with it. I once believed in women pastors and preachers. I once believed in tithing because my pastor taught that it was Bible, ladies and gentlemen. This is why many of you believe in the false teachings, ladies and gentlemen, of Geno Jennings. This is why many of you believe in his false teachings because of the influence ladies and gentlemen, that he has. Hmm? Many of you that are listening to me believe the way that you believe because of your pastor. Because of your pastor. He's your hindrance. If you can get from under him, and y'all, we're going to move some of you, the remnant, some of you are ch ch you that are chosen, he's going to remove you from the pastor because as long as you're there, you're not going to get the truth because of the influence that he has over you and the respect you has have for your leader. And you believe that he's true. He's the man of God. You believe that. And therefore you can't get free. But what did Yahweh do to Abraham? Yahweh removed Abraham, amen, from his father's house, from his kindreds, ladies and gentlemen, from his relatives and showed him a place that he should go. He didn't know where he was going, but he left by faith. And because y'all, uh, Abraham removed himself from his family, his relatives, his father's house, which was a hindrance unto him, he received revelation and truth, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, um, the prophet Isaiah said, the year King Uzziah died, I saw Yahweh. <laughs> he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah could not see Yahweh until King Uzziah died. When Yahweh removed that hindrance, then he got the revelation. Once you get from under the influence of your pastor, your leader, that's what I had to do. Once I got from under that influence, ladies and gentlemen, then my eyes began to come open 
Glory to Yahweh. This is why Geno Jennings followers believe in his falsehood because he has a lot of influence over his followers. Pastors have a lot of influence on what their congregants believe. Are you listening to me? Many of the things that you believe, you believe them. They're not true now. They're not scripture. They're not Bible. But you believe them because of your leader, your pastor. You believe he's the man of God. You respect him, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why you are in the state that you are in. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 16 let me read this to you, ladies and gentlemen, because I know a lot of things that I'm teaching to you today. I know it's weird. Some of y'all think I'm weird. Y'all think I'm weird. I'm, I'm talking crazy. I'm a loony. I know it. You think I'm a loony too. But eventually, if you're chosen, eventually you're going to realize that what I was teaching was true. You know, Apostle Paul went around persecuting the church, the people of Yahweh. He thought he was doing the right thing. He was defending Judaism. He was uh, uh, defending uh, the Jews or Hebrew faith, ladies and gentlemen. And so he did it ignorantly in an unbelief. Scripture said he was a blasphemer, ladies and gentlemen. And Injurious man, but he did it ignorantly in unbelief and he obtained mercy. Paul thought he was doing the right thing. His name was Saul at the time. Amen. And, 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 but he realized he eventually he was enlightened. He came. The, the fate that he fought against became the fate that he preached. Ladies and gentlemen, the fate that he tried to destroy, huh? To eradicate. He began to preach and teach that same faith. Isn't that amazing? And it, there was a time in my, my life, if I would have heard you teaching that we should observe the seventh day Sabbath, the dietary law, and that women can't preach, I would have thought you was crazy. Ladies, I would have thought that you was out of your mind, that you didn't have much knowledge. You was illiterate in the scripture. Let me read this to you in 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. Beginning with verse 15. Listen what uh, Apostle Peter said about Apostle Paul. An account that the long suffering of our master is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Now listen to this very carefully. As also in all his epistles, Apostle Paul Speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood. Some of the things that Paul taught, it was true, but it was hard to be understood, ladies and gentlemen. Being under that religious tradition for many years, and then you coming into something, uh, hearing something you never heard before. Believing what you believe, and somebody come against your belief system, ladies and gentlemen. It says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things and which are some things hard to be understood. I know some of the things that I'm teaching are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned. You know, some people just unreasonable. Paul said, pray that Yahweh would deliver me from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. Some people just are unreasonable. You just can't reason with them in the scripture. Yahosh, Yahweh said, come, uh, come, let us reason together. Some people, you just can't reason with them because they're close-minded. They're closed-minded, ladies and gentlemen. They're set in their ways and, and they're just unreasonable and wicked people. You won't get nowhere with them. He said, an unstable, rash, rash means twist, as they do all also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ain't it amazing? When people twist the scriptures, they doing it to their own destruction. 
When you twist the scriptures, you're doing it to your own destruction. I know some things I teach are hard for most of you to understand, but a remnant of you will eventually realize I am speaking the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you think my teachings are weird and crazy, but some of you will eventually embrace them. Some Christians are just slow learners. Some of us are just slow learners. We, we don't learn on the same level and the same pace, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you that have rejected my teachings, now Yahweh is not finished with you yet. Philippians 1 and 6 declares, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Yahushua Mashiach. Yahweh is not finished with you yet. You may persecute me. You may persecute me. You may criticize me because I criticize people. <laughs> there was a time in my life I criticized people that uh, observed the seventh day Sabbath. I criticized people that uh, observed the dietary law. I thought I had it all together. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. I remember I was a young minister and I was invited to preach to a, 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 a certain church and they kept the Sabbath and they observed the dietary law. And I called myself going over there and I'm going to set them straight. I was going to bring the truth. I was going to bring the light to them. But I don't know what happened. That service was counseled. And I am so grateful <laughs> that that service was counseled because I was going to embarrass myself. I was going to embarrass myself. Why did I do this? Because I was taught this way. My pastor influenced me. My elders believed it. The influence they had over my life, ladies and gentlemen. I believed that they were right. I was a young minister, a novice, ladies and gentlemen. I had limited understanding and limited knowledge at the time. But eventually, Yahweh, amen, revealed more and more truth to me. Now, the key is one must be hungry and thirsty for more of Yahweh and his truth. Matthew 5 and 6, Yahoshua declared, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, that Yahweh is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? So you have to be a diligent seeker. You have to be hungry and thirsty for more of Yahweh in his truth, okay? Many people are not like that, but you have to be hungry and thirsty for truth. Listen to what Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number uh, 7 says. Listen to this, Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number seven. It says, the full soul loaf and honeycomb. See, when you fool, <laughs> amen, you're loaf. You won't even desire a honeycomb. You won't desire no more food. You, you, somebody can put a, your favorite meal before you, ladies and gentlemen. But if you fool, you won't even care for it. You tell them, uh, just wrap it up or put it up. I'll eat it later. The full soul loafed and honeycomb. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Listen, if you ain't ate in three days, you hungry. <laughs> you ain't ate in a long time. Somebody give you a meal that you don't even like. They may give you some rutabaga, some greens. Ladies and gentlemen, something that you usually don't eat, some broccoli, avocado like me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not fond of 
avocado. Some people are. But if I'm hungry, tell you what, I eat it. I don't, I'm not fond of broccoli. But if I'm hungry enough, I guarantee I eat that broccoli, ladies and gentlemen. Bless the name of Yahweh. So to a hungry soul, every bit of thing is sweet. That's why many of y'all can sit under these false teachers and false pastors. That's why some of y'all sitting under Geno Jennings, you hungry. That's why he can give you all that bitter word, but it's still sweet to you. Even though it's bitter, it's sweet to you because you're hungry. Because you're hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, so... Yahushua says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst at the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Even though you may not see the truth now. And some of you criticize and persecute, ladies and gentlemen, those who speak the truth. You look at my comment section. Anytime I deal with Geno Jennings and his falsehood, his false teachings, boy, they attack me. Boy, like pit bulls, like he sick them, his dogs on me, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, they go ballistic, and they say some cruel things. I mean, derogatory, ladies and gentlemen, statements, glory to Yahweh. And I understand why. It's because they've been taught a certain way, and I'm going against their religious grain, their belief system. And I understand why they retaliate the way that they retaliate glory to y'all but i have to remember not to respond the way they respond because ladies and gentlemen they offended they're hurt that somebody will criticize their pastor that they love dearly their pa they believe that he is a true man of god and then someone criticize his teaching oh they're gonna go ballistic they're gonna defend him they're gonna protect him that just is normal, ladies and gentlemen. That's normal for people to do the same. I, 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 I used to criticize people that criticize my pastor when I was in a false Christian church. I used to defend my church, my teachers, my pastor. Ignorantly, I was like Saul. I persecuted others, ladies and gentlemen, because I thought I was defending the true faith. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Listen, even though you may not see the truth now and criticize and persecute those who speak the truth, because you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you will eventually get it. For some, it takes longer than others. You're chosen. You're going to eventually get it. I was chosen. I eventually got it. Ladies and gentlemen, and you're going to eventually get it. So we have to be patient with people. We have to be patient. We have to be patient when they respond negatively. Now, some people, listen to me, some people want to hurt you. Some people, their intention is, ladies and gentlemen, to kill you. They hate us. They hate us. They want to, amen, amen kill you if they can, ladies and gentlemen, with their words. They are try their best to assassinate your character, ladies and gentlemen, with their word. But some people, they criticize because they're defending what they know. That's the only thing they know. And so they criticize it, ladies and gentlemen. They try to protect it, defend it, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. This is why I must be patient with you. I did not always know this truth that I know today. It was a process, and I know it's going to be a process for you. It was a process for me. Some, I, I'm, I'm sure there was people that thought I may never receive this truth. I, I know it was cert certain people thought, oh, but that boy's lost. He, he on his way to hell. He going to stay in that false Christian church. They, they probably said that about me. But look at me today. Being confident of this very thing. He which have begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of our master, Yahushua Mashiach. Ain't that amazing? Please be patient with me. For Yahweh is not through with me yet. 
Glory to Yahweh. We all under construction. Well, let me say it like this. Some of us are under construction. We're not all under construction. But some of us are under construction, ladies and gentlemen. We're like uh, a clay in the hands of a potter. Some of us in the potter's house, glory to Yahweh. We don't arrive to the truth overnight. It takes time. If you are chosen, you are on a spiritual staircase. You are gradually moving up this staircase of truth. One step at a time. One step at a time. That's I, I look back over my life. My journey started in 18, uh, 1982. 1982. That's when my journey started. I was a teenager in 1982. But look where I'm at today. Nobody would have thought that I would be where I am at today. I didn't even think that I would be where I am today. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. So if you are chosen, you are on a spiritual staircase, you are gradually moving up this staircase of truth. Many of you that are listening to me, some of you that are in other ministries, some of you in Geno Jennings ministry, you're on a staircase. Yahweh led you to Geno Jennings only to get what you needed. Temporary, not for you to stay there. You, you're going to move on to more. Huh? That's a temporary place. Yahweh sent you there. Yahweh sent me to the apostolic church. He sent me to the apostolic church to get what I needed. Because they, they taught Acts 2.38. They taught the oneness of, of Elohim. They taught a little bit of holiness. There's some things they taught that helped me, amen, on this journey. So I can't overlook that, ladies and gentlemen. They couldn't take me to perfection, but they gave me something on this journey, ladies and gentlemen. Yahushua declared in Matthew 7 and verse 8, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Some of you that are in Geno Jennings ministry, you are there temporarily. You will eventually move on. You are just passing through to more truth. That's what you're doing. You're just passing through. Hmm? That's a temporary place for you. And Yahweh's going to move you on. Yahweh sent me places. It was temporary. I thought that I was going to be rooted there. Yahweh's going to plant me there. And I arrived and I apprehend. But Yahweh said, he showed me. that what you. I sent you there to get what you needed. What was essential, but they couldn't give you everything. So I have, I have to move you on to more truth, ladies and gentlemen. So most of you who are under Geno Jennings, you are not hungry nor thirsty. Most of you, now listen to me. Most of you who are under Geno Jennings, you are not hungry nor thirsty thirsty. You know how I can tell? I can tell in my comment section. I, I, I can tell when people respond negatively because they're trying to protect or defend something that they believe is true. But I can tell when someone is hateful and hurtful and wicked and evil, they're out to destroy you. Have no fruits of the spirit. No love. No love whatsoever. They want to kill you. I mean, they on a witch hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Glory to Yahweh. So most of you who are under Geno, you are not hungry nor thirsty for more of Yahweh and his truth. You are set in your ways. You are closed-minded. You will never escape the falsehood of Geno. You're going to die there. You're going to die in that ministry. Proverbs 21 and 16. This is a word for you. 
the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Second Peter chapter two, verse 18 tells us they that was clean escaped from them that lived in error. I escaped the apostolic church. You will escape Geno Jennings ministry. You would escape T.D. Jake's ministry or Joel Osteen, whatever ministry, false ministry. If you're in a Christian church, you're in a false ministry. You will escape it if you're chosen. If you're clean, you're going to eventually escape it. You're going to get out. They will not destroy you. They will not ultimately destroy you. Now, some people are unclean. They'll never escape. They'll never escape. Colossians 2 and 8 tell us, ladies and gentlemen, let's read it to you as we close this broadcast. I'm going to read this verse to you. We can quote it, but let's, let us read it in its totality. Colossians 2 and 8 tell us, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, that's Geno Jennings for sure there, after the rudiments of the world and not after Mashiach. May Yahweh bless you. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again, my friend, with another message from the word of Yahweh. We greet each and every one of you in the matchless name of Yahushua Homashia. We thank Yahweh for you. And we would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. We thank Yahweh for each and every one of you today. And um, send those comments. We would like to hear from you, hear your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Shalom.